Hey Anger, would you like to become a better troller? If so, check out a Teaching Fishing Trolling Boot Camp this summer. Four hours of high intensity, hands-on, on the water training with one of the Teaching Fishing staff will cover all the basics and pro tips you need to become a better troller. Class size and dates are limited, so use the link on the screen to get all the details and sign up information. Learning to become a better troller is easy with a Teaching Fishing Trolling Boot Camp. Are you ready for the Spring Detroit River Walleye Run? Do you understand the three major migration routes into the Detroit River from Lake Erie? The timing of each route, where the fish that use each route end up to spawn, or how changes in our winters have affected the amount of fish that use each route? Check out the Teach and Fishing Detroit River Workshop, now available for streaming at teachandfishing.com. Just the facts. It's a fact that one of the most important things we teach here at Teaching Fishing is boating safety. Having an inflatable PFD on any time you're on the water can help save your life when an accident happens. You know, I've been on the boat when something goes bad and it goes bad very, very quickly and there's very little time to react. So, a high quality inflatable PFD are easy to wear, they're comfortable, they're not bulky, they allow for full fishing movement and they could save you in case of an emergency. Make sure you've got an auto inflatable, inflatable PFD on your body as soon as that boat leaves the dock and don't take it off till you're tied back up. We want you to come back from every fishing trip and join us back here at Teaching Fishing. Just the facts. There, uh, obviously, if you want to learn how to use lead core, our trolling boot camp uh, get you on the boat, and we actually are going to we go through everything you need for trolling, uh, all the diving devices, lead core, all the setups that you need. So we've got a few spots open on a couple of our trolling boot camps. Uh, secondly, Detroit River Workshop. Again, a lot of you are done with Detroit River, but this I think is a great time now to kind of if you haven't seen that, download that and get that, and kind of apply what you learned this year or saw this year and kind of understand why it happened. So you're better prepared for next year. And of course, PFDs. Um, I got to tell you, I, I, I smile a lot uh, on the Detroit river uh, this year. Um, one of the things that we're seeing a lot more of is anglers on the Detroit river wearing PFDs. Um, and look at, I don't care if it's because we talked about it or somebody else talked about, it, I don't really care. Um, I'd like to think that we had something to do with it um, a little bit, but man, it, it really makes me happy that um, uh, I'm seeing more and more people and more and more charter captains uh, put their customers in PFDs. Accidents happen so quick. You know, I, I've told you the story of you know when Dean and I were out and we had a little issue real quick and it happens fast. Um, so you want to make sure that you are prepared. All right, real quick. Mark says, in what situation would you use lead core with a deep dive and crankbait versus just a crankbait? Uh, maybe a situation where it's going to take too much line. You know, maybe I may need 120, 150, 180 feet of line to get the crankbait down and I can do it with three colors of lead. So I, I may want to shorten um, the amount of line out or sometimes it's easier to run multiple rods uh, when you add lead corn, you can actually spread them out and actually get them whack away from behind from the boat. So um, that kind of helps. Uh, or again, if you if you if you got a crankbait, you know maybe you got a crankbait like this, uh, you know a bandit that that tops out at basically efficiently 28 feet, and you want to get it down to 40 feet. Um, a couple colors of lead gets it down there. So there you go. Um, all right, Mark says he has four Stearns Class 1 PFDs with a big pillow behind your head, along with my inflatable. So that's what I want to talk about real quick, next 10 minutes here. Uh, what have you guys added to your boat for safety? Uh, anything that, that we've talked about here, um, anything you've saw somebody else do, anything you've seen anywhere else, what have you added to your boat the last year, couple of years for safety? And what is maybe the one thing you put on your boat that, that you never thought you'd have on your boat uh, that you now have? I know a lot of guys bought personal location beacons from us when we did this special. Um, I know a lot of guys are, uh, I see a lot more guys with marine radios, even if they're just handhelds as opposed to cell phones. Look at Dean and I, um, and actually a couple of my other charter buddies, we actually went back to, uh, I probably shouldn't say this because it's nice to not have everybody on the radio, but 
we went back to the Marine Radio because there are lots of places in Canada where cell phones don't work. So I'm trying to call Dean. I got a hot bike going, or he's trying to call me. And, you know, or Paul Doty's saying, hey, I got this hot color working. And we're in Canada and the phones don't work. So we actually went back to um, VHF Marine Radios because they work everywhere. And if anybody's close enough, right, you're going to get them. So uh, Mark says he had an EPIRB. Love that. Uh, Kurt Kebach, this is one of my favorites, a four step ladder. You know, we've talked about this a lot, right? Uh, I know a lot of our teaching fishing uh, compatriots, uh, and there's not too many of us in pretty good shape. <laughs> so, uh, having a ladder is important because you know, something happens, uh, somebody goes over, uh, it's, it's really hard to get them back in the boat. Um, you know, the really the only way to do it is to get them back by the prop. And now you got the issue of the prop. Um, put a, put a ladder on, put a good three or four step ladder gets down in the water. Um, uh, make it easy for people to get up. Ken says, you carry a handheld radio in addition to your Marine. I do. I have a handheld radio, uh, in my, uh, ditch bag. Um, so uh, I have a, a, a handheld Marine radio just in case. Uh, in addition to my permanent mount, I absolutely do. Um, again, if I have to go in or if my regular radio doesn't work, uh, I've got a handheld radio that works. It has DSC on it. Uh, so I push the button and it sends my location directly to um, uh, directly to the Coast Guard. So mine, my handheld radios are a little bit more expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks. Uh, they actually have a GPS uh, antenna. There's no readout or anything, but it actually has a GPS antenna. So when I push that, it sends my location to um, uh, the Coast Guard. I think I think they were like 260, 270. Um, I carry one of those. I also carry a $99 cheap one that I keep somewhere on the dash. So if I do need a Marine Radio in a hurry, I got it. But in my ditch bag is a good one with a DSC call uh, on it. Mitch said he had two offshore light jackets. Now, this is, a, this is really important, right? Inflatable light jackets, look at Inflatable life jackets are not, how do I put this? Inflatable life jackets are not designed to be lifesavers. If you have to go in the water and there's a situation, you're going to be in the water for an hour, two hours, three hours. The last thing you want on, well, the last, the last thing you want on is nothing. Uh, next to the last thing is inflatable. They will help you float, but they are not lifesavers. They are rescue aids. Somebody went over, there they are, I can see them. They can stay afloat, I can get them in the boat. Five, 10, 15 minute rescue. Inflatables are rescue devices, they're not life-saving devices. Type two or type one, those big orange ugly ones, those are life-saving uh, jackets, life-saving PFDs, right? So if there's a situation that you're gonna go in uh, I would hope that the only thing you have in your boat is not inflatable life jackets. That somewhere in the boat, you have enough of those orange type one or type twos. Uh, difference is type one will turn an unconscious person upright, a type two will not. Uh, we're required by law as charter captains to carry type ones. I would encourage everybody that's listening to have type ones in your boat. Um, those are life-saving PFDs. You get a leak in your boat, somebody hits you, you, you go under, or whatever the case may be, you got a problem, get those inflatables off as fast as you can, get your type one or type two orange jackets on. Um, again, inflatable PFDs are simply rescue devices. They're not life-saving devices, okay? Um, Mark says, I had those big PFDs because of Dean and Year issue last year. Uh, also, the bag jackets went in the can. All the bag jack, yeah, that's, yeah, that, 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 yeah. Uh, Ken says, assuming what the ditch bag is for, what's in it? Good question, Kenny. So uh, I have a signal mirror. I have some expired flares. I have uh, a couple of bottles of water. I have a uh, my marine radio with DSC and for um, uh, uh, for to be able to make a call. Uh, I carry a couple of glow sticks in there for light. I carry three or four rescue whistles because uh, again, I can't. I can't think of anything worse than someone being close enough to rescue and they can't hear you, right? So, um, you know, uh, so I have flares. I have silum sticks for light. A couple of bottles of water. A couple of energy bars. Uh, marine radio. Uh, signal light. 
a couple expired flares. That's where my expired flares go because they still work. Um, that's where my expired flares go. I have an orange um, uh, SOS flag. It's a ball in a, in a square. I have a flag uh, in there. I keep a couple uh, bungee cords in there that I buy at Menards with carabiners on each end. So I can hook to uh, my uh, man overboard light. I can hook to another person. Um, I keep five or six in there. Uh, anytime a boat, I'm kind of a little, probably a little overkill. Anytime a boat goes over, you want to stay with the boat. Well, if a boat goes completely over, you're trying to grasp on to, right? You're trying to grab on to the keel and the waves are hitting you. It's really hard to do, right? So by carrying, and you can buy these at Menards. I think they're like $4.99. They make a 48-inch uh, bungee cord with carabiner clips at both ends. You put one clip on your life jacket, and you reach under the bottom of the boat, and you clip one of those hooks to one of the cleats on the boat, you're going to stay with the boat. I carry six of those in my ditch bag. I can hook one to the man overboard light. I can hook one to the life ring. I can hook one to a buddy if he's having a problem. It just makes it easier to keep everything together. Um, that's what I keep in my ditch bag. A lot of guys have other stuff in there. Uh, my personal location beacon uh, is actually not in my um, not in my ditch bag. It's actually out on my dash. So in case we need it real quick, we don't have to go through the ditch bag process. Um, but if something was going to happen, that PLB would be instantly in the ditch bag and out with me. So. Um, that's just something that that I keep in it, right? Anything you're gonna need, anything you're gonna need that if you go over, you're gonna want to have fast and quick. The last thing you want to do is go over, have a problem in your boat, and your flares are in a storage compartment, still in the packaging from the store, right? Because now your boat's upside down, you can't get in your glove box. Have a ditch bag or a ditch box. Some guys use those uh, plastic waterproof uh, ammo ba ammo boxes, right? Good to go. Right, just throw throw that stuff in there, seal everything up, put everything in, in sealable bags, put it in that box, and then if something happens, the first thing you do is you take that box, you pull a bungee cord out, you clip that box to you, and now you've got your ditch bag. Um, be ready, man. Be ready, be ready, be ready. So you said I carry two high impact life jackets that we wear when the weather is cold. Great idea. Um, water activated lights on all your life jackets, that's a that's a big deal. Uh, on my inflatables, I put Siloom sticks so that you can just crack them and shake them. Uh, so all my inflatables, once they open up, they have both a Siloom stick and a whistle. Um, so that's kind of uh, something I do. But my Type 1s have water-activated SOS lights that once they hit the water, it activates them and they flash SOS automatically. Don't have to worry about it. Um, and then somebody set a whistle uh, on each of your jackets, too. That's That's a huge... That's a huge thing. Um, have those ready to go. Because one thing we found out, right? So I, I'm not, I'm not going to revisit Dean and I's escapade a couple years ago. Uh, maybe at some other point we will. Um, but here's what I will tell you. I always had, uh, we have to have lights on our PFDs to meet uh, charter captain standards. All right. So I had lights on my PFDs up here on the shoulder. That you had to reach, that you had to turn the bottom to turn the lights on. You had to push it in and turn the bottom. Okay, easy. Here, I'm going to tell you when you put on a Type One life jacket, you cannot, you do not have the manual dexterity to reach up here with both hands and turn that. Especially if you're a little bit cold or a little bit stressed from going in the water, your manual dexterity, especially with that big bulky life jacket, you can't reach up here and turn that on. Have a light that instantly goes on when it hits the water automatically. Dan makes a good point in your, in your ditch bag, a good first aid kit. Just get a little small, you know, first aid kit uh, with some basic first aid kits. And I know guys who carry thermal blankets, uh, fire starter sticks. Um, you know, that's something that where we fish would, would, would be a little drastic. Um, but if you travel offshore, um, if you're in a, maybe you're in a spot that's, that's maybe you're up at Isle Royal and you're fishing or maybe you're up in the UP or maybe you're fishing Lake Superior, um, having a thermal blanket and a fire starter stick might save your life, right? You might have to get to a spot and start a fire. Um, whatever you think is necessary for you, uh, and then go a little bit further. Um, but I have, you know, something to drink, something to eat, 
something for people can see me, people something that people can hear me, a way to signal. That's why I carry that flag, um, a radio so I can call people. Um, that's all stuff that that I carry in my bag. Um, that's just stuff that I have ready to go. So there you go. Okay. All right. The biggest thing about life jackets or PFDs, guys, is you got to have them on, right? So I get a lot of guys telling me, well, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got, uh, you know, type threes, which is all you, which is all you're required to have. <clears throat> um, I don't like to wear them because they're bulky. So I put them over the back of my seat. Okay. Well, you reach over to net a fish and you go ass over tea kettle in the water. What good is that life jacket on the back of the seat? Do you, um, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I, you know, inflatables. I, look, at I, I test my inflatables every year. I, I recharge mine every year, and I have eight of them. And I have either jumped in the water or pulled the cord on every single one of them every year. I've never yet to have a failure. Um, could that happen? Sure. No doubt it could. But here's what I know. I'd rather take a chance with a one in 1,000 chance of a failure with an inflatable that's on. Because even if that, if it doesn't blow up, you can pull it apart and start blowing on it. And you still got a first aid, you still got a light jacket. As opposed to a jacket that doesn't inflate, that's too bulky and no one's going to wear it. Because a life jacket doesn't work at all if it's not on. Right? And I would argue this. I'm going to end with this. I would argue this. If you look at the statistics, very, we wear PFDs wrong. We wear them backwards. Very, 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 very few, and I mean a minuscule, single-digit percentage of accidents in a boat where people are hurt or drowned happen when you're driving. So everybody gets in their seat, puts a life jacket on, and drives. They get up on the front deck and they're fishing. They take the life jacket off. Single-digit drownings and death happen when people are driving. 85, 90 percent of those deaths happen from fishing. I'm reaching over the front deck to get a fish, to grab a fish. I'm reaching over the front deck to net a fish. I'm reaching over the back deck to net a fish. I'm sitting on the back deck to go to the bathroom. That's when accidents happen. Very few accidents statistically happen when you're driving. So according to the statistics, we should take our life jackets off when we're driving and put them on when we're fishing. We do it backwards. Just telling you what the data says. Uh, Ken says, what's the brand of the inflatable use? I use the Onyx, uh, and the higher the number, the more flotation it has. You can get some good uh, uh, life. I've seen some good sales on PFDs at uh, Bass Pro, uh, West Marine, $59, $69. See them go on sale a lot around Christmas time. Um, just, just check. Um, you know, Mustang obviously is, is kind of, Mustang and Onyx are kind of the leaders. Um, West Marine and these guys, you know, they, I don't know who makes theirs. I'm assuming it's one of those two. Um, try one on first. I like the Onyx because the, the, the straps are very thin. The West Marine and the Bass Pro and the Mustang and the Stearns are a little bit wider. Um, I like a little bit thinner strap. Um, but just get something you're going to wear that that's just get something comfortable that you're going to wear, but you can get them for 59, 69, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks. Um, and every couple of years, I think every three years you're supposed to recharge them cost you 25 bucks. So, you know, a hundred bucks for three years of safety. I don't think is too much to ask. And I don't think it's too much to pay. Uh, I'm adamant about it in, in, in my, in my boats. Um, I think it's important that you wear them. So, okay, let's wrap that up. Um, it is summertime. I, I get it. Uh, and I would encourage you guys, I would encourage you guys this summer when you're out fishing on a nice day and there's no wind blowing and the water's really warm, I would encourage you to jump in the water with your fishing clothes on, right? A pair of shorts, t-shirt, whatever you're wearing that day. Okay, and I would tell you to have somebody in that boat drive that boat at two miles an hour away from you, like you would if you were trolling, and see how long it takes you to catch that boat and then get in that boat. I think you realize that what you have now is very inadequate for anything but the best situation. Because remember, if you fall in by accident, 
you're probably in shock. You've probably sucked in some water. That's that's the way most people drown when they go in. They go in, they go, oh, especially when the water's cold and they suck water and now they're fighting the water in their lungs and they're trying to stay afloat. Um, I think you'd be surprised how hard it is to catch up with a boat that's going a mile and a half an hour away from you, how fast the panic sets in. And I think you'd be surprised how hard it is for you to get in the boat or to pull somebody else in your boat. That is an eye-opening experience. Then I would tell you to do it with someone else in the water and put on what you're going to wear spring or fall, rain gear, maybe a pair of boots, uh, rain jacket, um, jump in and watch the difference and then do it with an inflatable, watch what happens. The only thing I would tell you to do is get in the water in a controlled environment, do it at a pool, get in the water, have somebody throw you a life jacket. Let's say you fell on the boat and your life jacket's on the back of the uh, chair, have somebody throw you a life jacket in the water, in the deep end, try to put it on. I think you'd be surprised that you're fooling yourself with the way you are running your safety on your boat. Okay. All right. Be cognizant, be safe, come home to see us. All right, guys. Thanks for your time tonight. We will catch up with you uh, next week. Coffee Hour Plus. Appreciate all your time tonight.